So I have some huge news and a huge win coming out of the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. The Fifth Circuit just upheld the nationwide block on the ATF's rule on frames and receivers. However, the ATF is likely going to take this to the Supreme Court, and then we are likely gonna get the Supreme Court's input. So let's talk about this. But real quick before you jump in this video, if you think the ATF needs to be abolished, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to mention that we actually have released the podcast, uh, the Arm Scholar podcast. I'm releasing it here on the YouTube channel every single Sunday at 5 p.m. And then also it's available on audio format, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and pretty much everywhere that you could listen to audio. So if you're interested in that, please support the audio side of things. I will leave a link down below to the Apple podcast and all that. And also, if you're interested, leave reviews because that does help the algorithms over there. But thank you guys so much for all of your support with the podcast and I look forward to bringing you more of those. So like I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we will be discussing the ATF's rule on frames and receivers, which was recently struck down by a federal district court as entirely invalid. And now we got the Fifth Circuit's input and they have denied the ATF's request for a stay. The case we will be talking about in this video is called Vanderstock v. Garland. This is a lawsuit decided by a Texas federal district court judge, Judge Reed O'Connor. Judge O'Connor recently ruled that the frames and receivers rule is in fact invalid and goes beyond the ATF's authority. Therefore, in his decision, he granted the plaintiffs their motion for summary judgment and vacated the frames and receivers rule entirely, and he vacated it nationwide. That, of course, was a huge win, but the ATF was not going to just simply take that loss. So they decided to file an appeal up to the Fifth Circuit. In the meantime, they were also granted a temporary seven-day administrative stay from the district court judge, Judge Reed O'Connor. Judge O'Connor granted that limited stay only so that the ATF could then have enough time to go to the Fifth Circuit and seek a more permanent stay. The ATF filed their appeal to the Fifth Circuit and also requested a more permanent stay from the Fifth Circuit. Well, we are waiting to see what the Fifth Circuit would say about that, and we received news that the Fifth Circuit has denied the ATF stay. This is huge news and a big win for the Pro-2A side because the Fifth Circuit has found that Judge O'Connor was correct in striking down some portions of the ATS Frames and Receivers Rule, and they found that it was appropriate for him to do that, and therefore they denied the ATF's request for a stay. However, the ATF did get some small wins out of this order, and the ATF's immediate response is that they are likely going to take this up to the Supreme Court for emergency relief within the next 10 days. Now, the order of the Fifth Circuit reads, and it's really important, in considering an emergency stay requested by the government, we consider four factors. And here are the four factors that they use to determine whether or not they're going to grant the ATF stay or deny it. One, whether the government makes a strong showing that is likely to succeed on the merits. Two, whether the government will be irreparably injured in the absence of a stay. Three, whether other interested parties will be irreparably injured by a stay. And four, where the public interest lies. The Fifth Circuit states that because the ATF has not demonstrated a strong likelihood of success on the merits, nor irreparable harm in the absence of a stay, we deny the government's request to stay the vacature of the two challenged portions of the rule. They state that vacature reestablishes the status quo ante, which is the world before the rule became effective. This effectively maintains pending appeal, the status quo that existed for 54 years from 1968 to 2022. The ATF is likely correct, however, that the vacature was overbroad. The district court analyzed the legality of only two of the numerous provisions of the rule, which contains an explicit severability clause. Where a court holds specific portions of a rule unlawful, severance is preferred when doing so, will not impair the function of the rule as a whole, and there is no indication that the regulation would not have been passed but for its inclusion. Because the agency has shown a strong likelihood of success on its assertions that the vacature of the several non-challenged portions of the rule was overbroad, we stay the vacature pending appeal as to the non-challenged provisions. We sua sponte expedite the appeal to the next available oral argument calendar. To allow time for additional proceedings as appropriate, this order is administratively stayed for 10 days. So that was the order of the Fifth Circuit, and you may be asking, what does that mean? Well, the Fifth Circuit Court agrees with the lower court judge that he was correct in finding that the ATF's expansion of the definition of an unfinished frame receiver as a firearm goes beyond the ATF's statutory authority. Therefore, the Fifth Circuit denied the ATF's request to stay that portion of the decision. 
Now, where the ATF is getting a slight win out of this order is that the Fifth Circuit did state that in their order, they believe that Judge O'Connor was overbroad in his decision. Since the ATF rule includes severability language, the Fifth Circuit believes that Judge O'Connor should have simply struck down the challenge portions, only those portions, and only those portions of the rule instead of just striking down the entire rule. The Fifth Circuit then set the appeal and oral arguments to be expedited, and then they also did something very important. They set a 10-day administrative stay on their decision. What they are doing is giving the ATF and the government the opportunity to seek further relief. This is because the ATF originally, when they filed their stay to the Fifth Circuit, they requested for the Fifth Circuit to grant that type of administrative stay so that if they lost in the Fifth Circuit level here on the stay, they could go up to the Supreme Court and seek Supreme Court review. Now, today, in response to the Fifth Circuit's order and that 10-day administrative stay, the government also submitted a request for clarification to the Fifth Circuit. In the request, the ATF seeks clarification from the court on whether the Fifth Circuit's 10-day administrative stay means that the entire frames and receivers rule can still be enforced or whether only portions of it can currently be enforced. So where does this currently leave us with the ATF's rule on frames and receivers? Well, the Fifth Circuit has denied the ATF's request to stay Judge O'Connor's decision, which struck down major portions of the ATF's unfinished frames and receivers rule. The Fifth Circuit did grant a stay in the ATS favor on portions of the rule that were not challenged in the case because of severability language that's currently in that ATF rule. The Fifth Circuit also gave the government a 10-day administrative stay to seek Supreme Court review or other type of relief. But regardless, right now, the ATF's rule on frames and receivers really is on life support. They have a hard decision that they have to make on whether they are going to go up to Supreme Court, seek emergency relief from the Supreme Court, and seek the Supreme Court to grant an emergency stay pending the appeal. The ATF strategy here would be to argue to the Supreme Court that they need to have the Supreme Court step in immediately to grant their stay while this case is making its way through the Fifth Circuit appeals process. Of course, this is risky, very risky for the ATF, because the Supreme Court could outright just deny their emergency request. Again, this isn't a traditional kind of remedy. This is going to go through the Supreme Court's shadow docket. Uh, the Supreme Court could also take review and issue an order and ultimately say that a stay is not appropriate. So rule against the ATF. And then that would even put the ATF in a worse position. Both situations would be bad for the ATF. Their best hope is that since there is a 10-day clock that's currently ticking, it might force the Supreme Court's hand and might actually get them some sort of temporary relief. However, keep in mind that Justice Alito takes emergency requests that come out of the Fifth Circuit, and this would come out of the Fifth Circuit. And obviously, that is not good for the government. Alito is not the justice that the ATF would want. Also, the fact that the Supreme Court is currently out of session would mean that potentially emergency decisions like this would come down to just Alito instead of him referring it to the full court. Of course, he can still refer to the full court. That's always an option. Or he could decide it on his own. We will have to wait to see what the government ultimately decides to do, what the ATF wants to do, but my anticipation is that they will seek Supreme Court emergency relief because that's what they indicated in their original filings when they originally filed for a state of the Fifth Circuit. They indicated that if they lost, they would then go up to Supreme Court to seek emergency relief. So I suspect that is what they're going to do. And if they do that, that's going to make this case even more interesting because you would have the Supreme Court stepping in immediately to determine if the ATF, if what they're doing is appropriate or not, and if a stay is warranted on the rule on frames and receivers. So again, a very dynamic situation. Make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Have the bell icon clicked with all notifications on so that you don't miss any information. But if you like this video and you like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm, and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. As always, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by arm scholars, and this nation will be maintained by arm scholars.